Bushido is the world's toughest form of hand-to-hand -to -hand combat. It pulls in the world's biggest live audiences for any form of wrestling. Few bouts go the distance. This wrestling is for real. Competitors give and take ferocious blows to the head and body. It combines the best of judo and karate, sambo and kickboxing. Never before have fighters in these different disciplines challenged one another in the same ring. The UWFI, the sports governing body, has strict rules and regulations. You're allowed to use your forearm, but you must not use the point of your elbow. You can slap, but you cannot bite, scratch, or headbutt. Headbutting is illegal. When your opponent is on all fours, you cannot kick to the head. But as soon as one arm is up in defense, a kick to the head is allowed. When your opponent is on all fours, the rest of the body is a legitimate target. If a foul is committed, then points are deducted. Four points are conceded when a suplex throw results in a referee's count. Three points are lost for any knockdown, and one point is deducted for a suplex throw. Fighters can escape any submission hold by touching the rope, but they then concede a point. A submission at any time ends the fight. We're back in Tokyo. We're back at the Dome for another extraordinary night of Bushido action. Coming up, a moment of history in Bushido. But first, a rundown on the three singles matches. Miyato takes on Van News Allen. Seven faces up to Anjo. It's Albright against Akihara. Takada takes on not just one opponent, but two opponents, Sano and Kozlowski. up later, Nobuhiko Takada against Naoki Sano. And that follows immediately after, Nobuhiko Takada against Dennis Kozlowski. On the undercard, Masahito Kakihara against Gary Albright. Yoji Anjo against Dan Seven. And first up, Yuko Miyato against Bad News Allen.
30分一本勝負を行いますアコナ205番号ミヤトーユーコーユーコーミヤトーレスリングボクシングジュジツーキックボクシング He makes up for his lack of size with a great range of techniques. Twelve fights, only two victories, but he never gives up. Bad news, Alan may be the oldest competitor in town, but he was a class wrestler and judo player in his time. Always a very, very awkward opponent. Just two fights with the UWFI yet to register a victory. Your commentators, Ted Pelk and Jeff Thompson. Well, an interesting opening bout this evening. Bad News Allen squares off against Miyato. How do you see this one? This is really hard to predict what's going to happen. Once again, Miyato has his hands full. I mean, Bad News Allen really has a weight and strength advantage. And not only is he a big man, he really knows his submission wrestling knowledge. And he really has all those throwing techniques. That's a lot of extra weight to put up with. Yes, I think Miyato's going to have to really employ this tool. Well, Bad News Allen showing he can palm strike. Ooh, nearly went for the shoulder throw there. I think that comes out of his judo former days. Yeah, it looked like an Ippon Zioi over there. Bad news, Alan, funny out of the red corner. Miyato out of the blue corner. Now he's trying to go for the arm lock right now. Like I said, not only is Bad News Alan a big man, he also has the wrestling technique and knowledge to go with it. And that's a, he, that's a lot to put up with. And I don't know if Miyato can do it. If Miyato manages to stay away from him, keep his kicking and hitting distance, he may have a chance. If he keeps on throwing those low kicks like he's doing right now, I don't know if Allen can take that. But we've seen Allen before, and he knows how to move in on his opponent. Yes, he gave a good, good account of himself, in my view, against Gary Albright in their encounter. And he seems to have worked out his distance. Oh. He's quite prepared to learn. Good trip by Bad News Allen there. Shoot sign from referee Wada there. Referee Water breaking it up right now, and that's what Miyato wants. He doesn't want to be on the ground with Bad News Allen. He knows I, he's definitely at the disadvantage. I wouldn't want to be on the ground with oh. Bad News Allen. But Miyato seems quite game for getting involved. You see that clenched stand-up. He's not trying to fight him with his normal arsenal of kicks and spinning kicks and what have you. Well, I, uh, he must be scared of getting caught or something. He's very cautious when he's throwing those striking moves. And now, Bad News Allen looks like he's trying to set him up for a double wrist lock. And Miyato knows that's coming and he's trying to prevent it. A hushed crowd. Well, they realize that this thing could end any second and they don't want to miss that finishing maneuver. Miyato makes it to the ropes. Back to the center of the ring. in trouble face lock this could be it that was as good a spinning back kick as you'll ever get shocked bad news Alan now giving Miyato the upper hand you really could feel the impact on that rolling savat right there and now Miyato's going for the face lock but you see bad news Alan he's pretty tough too he's fighting off that, that face lock and he's doing pretty well oh yeah they, this is a tough man I mean as you say there's a lot of respect there there's a lot of pride no bad news, Allen, an Olympic medalist, and five-time champion of the yeah. A. Oh. Takes him down on the back of the neck and is going for the cross lock. Like we said, he's a judo champion, and he's also an Olympic medalist. As we see here, very good lift by Miyato, dumping bad news, Allen, on the deck. Well, he was trying to set up for that cross lock on the arm. He took him off balance, knocked him down. Unfortunately, they were too close to the ropes. He might have had him. Nice palm strike by Bad News Allen. Seems to be picking up a few moves in this UWFI format. Yes, but if uh, Bad News Allen shouldn't be trying to trade um, 
Heel of the hand strikes with Miato. Good low kicks. He's going to try to take him over again, but bad news, Allen is pretty good at weathering those, and he flips him over. Quick reversal, cross up on the arm. That's yeah. it. Did that, you see the speed of that? Hey, that was a big man showing that. Hey, look at this. Whoa. Hip throw, judo, textbook. They know wrestling. Miyato, not a happy man, the winner of Bad News Allen, his first win in UWFI. Well, Miyato looks a little bit shocked, that was quick. After that, Haraiko, see, he really went quickly for that Udinski Kakujushi Gatame, or the cross lock on the arm. That was blinding speed. A good win. The second singles of the night, Yoji Anjo against Dan Seven of the USA. Dan Seven of the USA may look as if he's a veteran, but he has great credentials. Wrestling, Sambo, Judo, he's learning to kick and hit. Great talent. He won first time out against Yuko Miyato. Yoji Anjo, known as a bit of a showman, perhaps too much of a showman, but he's a good wrestler. He's added kickboxing to his repertoire, and his kicking, in fact, is what is making him quite a threat as he moves up the rankings. 14 fights, 6 victories. Well, we get another chance to look at Dan Severin. And he does have a 100% record. One fight, one win. And he showed a devastating performance against Miyato in his last fight. The world amateur wrestling heavyweight champion and also the national Sambo champion. Well, Anjo and his distinctive left foot skin tights coming out of the red corner. Dan Seven out of the blue corner. And Anjo isn't wasting any time. Well, he really has his hands full today. That's a lot of extra weight to put up with, especially with this kind of caliber of fighter. I don't know. I think Anjo's more than capable of looking after himself, and I think it's seven who needs to be looking out for that, that, that awesome arsenal that Anjo possesses. What Severn has to look out for are those devastating hits, the striking techniques that Anjo has. But when they get down to wrestling, Anjo is certainly no stranger to wrestling. As we know, he has judo experience and he has a lot of submission wrestling experience. Well, I think it's Seven showing his wrestling experience and all-round abilities. He takes Anjo to the floor. Hey. Oh, oh, oh. 
referee Wada steps in. We see the timekeeper also concentrating, making sure that the bells run on the referee's instruction. Failure to do so could result in injury to any of the fighters. Looked like Dan Severn tried to throw a kick, didn't have much effect. Dan Severn trying to pick it up, gets under the center of gravity, takes him right off his feet and twists him around. Anjo isn't hurt, but... But he's not happy. This Dan Severn has a lot of power, and he really knows how to get under his opponent's center of gravity and throw the suplexes. Look at him work this suplex over. Good throw. Well, it, it didn't hurt Anjo. Anjo twisted out of it and landed properly, so there was no effect, but that could have been a potentially dangerous suplex. Picks oh. him up. Oh, he j fell on the back of his head that time. I don't think Dan Severn exactly planned that, but nevertheless, it looks like Anjo... Looks like he took a little bit of damage from that throw, and he's... A little more wearier as he approaches Dan Severn. Maybe a little bit, a bit of respect slipping in. Mm. Nice, nice single arm drag there by Dan Severn. While he tries to set up a submission hold on Anjo's upper body. When they're standing up, Dan Severn has the advantage when it comes to the suplexes. Takes him over with a beautiful fireman's carry, once again trying to set up a submission on that upper body. When they're standing up, the punches and strikes are Anjo's game. Dan Severn has his deadly suplexes, though, so Anjo has to be careful when he tries to clinch and throw those knees because Dan Severn can take him over on the back of his head. On the ground, I'd, I'd have to say that Dan Severn probably would have the advantage with the size and strength. Good low kicks. Shoot sign from referee Wada. And with the size and strength of fighters like this, Wada really has to be on top of it. He has to know when to stop about to prevent injury. Had a good submission hold there, but that's really taken a lot out of Anjo. Anjo's going to have to keep away from him. He doesn't want to get caught by Dan Severn in the standing up position like he is right now. No, he does not. Ooh. Belly to belly. And Anjo looks like he's in trouble. Yeah, he made a desperate grasp for the ropes there. And it's Seven who's leading by five points. You see here, look at this. Yes. Takes him right over. Beautiful suplex. That's really the suplex of a world champion. Crowd sensing something big could happen. Ooh. The front push kick over there. That hurt Dan Severn, but he picks him up, catches him. Once again, puts him to the ground. Now he's going for an Achilles tendon hold. Anjo's quick to react, and he's preventing it right now, but... Dennis Kozlowski really knows his submissions, doesn't he? Yeah, good. It's, it's interesting, because you feel Anjo has the advantage with his all-round ability, but here we have Dan Seven, after only one bout in UWFI, seemingly at home. Yeah, and he's, he's managing to catch a lot of Anjo's kicks. And the strength difference is really becoming apparent now. But Anjo receives a warning there from referee Wada. Anjo really desperate at this point. And he's, Anjo's kicks on finally gets it. Oh, right on the back of the head. Did you see him snap there? And Anjo's in trouble. He's in trouble on all counts. He's Four. taking a count. That might be Five. it. Seven's on his feet. And if Anjo manages to get up from this one, It'll be quite incredible, but it might just be a matter of time. He's going to have to show some kicking ability right here. He's going to have to throw some strikes if he... Uh-oh, he's going to take it again. And I think it's just a matter of time now. Yeah, I don't know how much more Anjo can say. I've never seen him work in trouble like this before. Seven looking confident. And he's not dropped a point either. This is an impressive performance. I don't know. The referee might want to stop this. It looks like Anjo is out on his feet. He took two devastating belly to back suplexes. Those German suplexes really snapped his head. Well, here's the other one. I don't know. I think they should stop it right now. 
Yeah, I'd have to agree with you. Uh-oh, he's going for that same move that he beat Miyato with. That modified leg lock with face lock. Yeah, this could be I, it. That, that has to be it. Yes, he's submitting. And Anzo submits. And there's your winner, Dan Sever. And as we see here, he just pressed home his advantage. This is an impressive win, a dominant win. And Seven is definitely... Well, he's really made a big impression on the UWF International, and we'll see a lot more from now. Arms aloft. Very purposeful looking, Dan Seven. And Angel in the foreground, wondering what's it is. Singles of the night, Masahito Kakihara against Big Bad Gary Albright of the USA. Masahito Kakihara, still only 21, only 195 pounds. You have to be brave when you're small to go in with the big men. And Kakihara has bravery by the ton. He's overcome injury and defeat, and the crowd love him for that. Only four wins in 11 outings. Gary Albright, big bad Gary Albright, is 350 pounds. He took Japan by storm last season. He's only lost one contest in his career in Bushido. That was against the great Takada. 11 fights, just one defeat. Well, I don't know if I'd be posturing to Gary Albright like that. But Kakihara obviously feels he's up to the man tonight. Well, we saw what happened to Kakihara the last time he went up against Gary Albright. He really had to get carried off. He really took a lot of damage and punishment. I wonder what he has planned for this match. He must have some kind of strategy to walk up in there. Maybe he's taking confidence from the fact that Takada has actually managed to put the big man down. Well, he's probably studied every one of those tapes a couple of million times, and he's going to try to work kicks off. But Gary is quick to stay on top of him, and here he goes. What a furious opening. A double whammy. Belly-to-belly -belly suplex, a double, and he picks him right up and then throws him again, and he's going for the full Nelson. Kakahara's eyes are shut. Everyone is quick in now. Albright's hanging on and not hanging him out for moments this fight. I think that might be it. Kakihara's in serious trouble. Albright smiling. Kakihara's not giving up. He's determined not to. The crowd want to know if he's going to give up. Wada wants to know and Albright wants to know. I don't know. I think this might be it. He makes it to the ropes. And it was a toe away from defeat there. Look at this. He was in some serious trouble there. 
No doubt about it, but he might be in more serious trouble now that the match is going to continue. Well, he holds his neck. Spirited, spirited comeback. Yeah, he's trying to go for those kicks like Takata did, and but Gary knows that, and he's rushing him in. He takes him with a nice dive, pulls him down to the ground. I'd have to say that Kakara is definitely at the disadvantage standing up or on the ground at this point. <laughs> Whether he's on the ground or on his feet, I think he's at a disadvantage. And Gary, even though he's on the ground, he can manage to just pick him up and launch him off of his feet. Kakara in the light blue trunks, almost swamped and engulfed by the sheer size and magnitude of Albright. I think this is a little bit much for Kakiara. He seemed very confident going in. He obviously had a good game plan, but so far he hasn't been able to execute it. Well, I think it's much the testimony of, of Kakihara's spirit. He's reaching for that rope. And it's not there, but he found it. Face lock by Albright. 15 point to 11 lead. Albright's already a master. Big lead in the early opening moments of this bout. Catches the kick. Ooh, good knee to the head. And he catches Albright with that knee to the head. But I don't know how long he's going to survive in there. Going for the cross lock on the knee. This is David and Goliath stuff. Uh-oh. I feel the belly to back suplex. Takes him right off his feet. And there you have it. The crowd felt it as well. But Gary, he's out. And Gary Albright is going for the full Nelson. Uh-oh. He's going for the full Nelson suplex. And he takes him right over. Oh, now he's out. Referee Wilder's going to step in now. One. One. Well, Two. he's taking the count. Four. But I'd be more interested in seeing us whether the doctors need to attend to him. He's actually trying to get up. He's out, but he's actually still trying to get up. You notice that. Some guts, but not enough up against Gary Albright. Look at this suplex from the full Nelson. He takes him over with that suplex. Boom, right on the back of the head. Let me tell you something. I've got enough injury, and I would not want one of those. Arms aloft, ever dominant. The winner, Gary Albright. Yeah, Kakiara looks like he's in serious trouble right now. We'll see if he's okay. That's another win for Gary Albright. Well, he's obviously there to make a point because he leaves that win with his arm for long, but we just hope that Kakihara's okay. An exciting fighter. And you see Yamazaki with his arm in a sling. He has a couple of fractures in his collarbone and shoulder from the last fight with Gary Albright, and he's helping Kakihara out. Boy, what a devastating fighter, huh? Yes, I'd have to agree. Albright obviously still smarting from his defeat. And only defeat for Takada, certainly making his presence felt. Takada topping the bill with two fights tonight. First, he takes on Denis Kozlowski. Denis Kozlowski won the silver medal at the 1992 Barcelona Olympic Games 
He's the favorite for the Atlanta games in 96. The question is, how can he face up to Takada in Bushido? Nobuhiko Takada is the undisputed wrestling world champion. He's the world martial arts champion. Tonight, he takes on two opponents, one after the other. Just one defeat, and that was to Gary Albright last season. Let me tell you something about Dennis Kozlowski. From 1983 to 1988, six years in a row in the Greco-Roman U.S. Championships, he scored first place. In the 88 Seoul Olympics, he got the bronze medal. And in the 1992 Olympics, he was a silver medalist. That was at Barcelona. And let me tell you something about Takada. He doesn't seem in any way perturbed. Kozlowski, bit of baptism by fire, in my view. He's really a classic wrestler. He's an all-American cl classic wrestler. He's even um, scored first place in the 1988 Pan American Games and also in the World Cup. Yeah, but all those titles don't count for much when you've got a caliber of fighters we're seeing here tonight. Takada now becoming a legend in his own lifetime. Well, the world heavyweight pro wrestling champion, Nobuhiko Takada, I don't think he really needs an introduction at this point. But look at this, belly to belly, takes Takata over. Excellent wrestling skills. The only trouble is, a lot of those um, suplexes, they do score points in amateur wrestling, but in this style of fighting, you have to put somebody away. As I made my earlier point, as you say, the titles, Kozlowski has won an, an impressive array of titles as well, means nothing tonight because it's a different game but you notice something interesting Takata with a striking ability could put Kozlowski away right right away but he's engaging in wrestling with Kozlowski and he's actually holding his own he's doing pretty good single such arm the nature, such is the nature of Takada's overall willingness to be seen as a truly great champion is he doesn't want to be seen to be taking an advantage over an opponent who would not be able to take him on with the full arsenal. Well, it's the name of the game to be able to throw hits in this, and I'm sure he's going to be throwing them later. But at this point, he's only engaging in wrestling, and he's actually proving that he can hold his own with a world-class wrestler like this. And it looks like he's, he's sometimes he's getting the upper hand, especially with the submission holds, because Dennis Kozlowski is an amateur wrestler, and I don't know how much she knows about submission wrestling. Well, I'm sure we'll find out. But I'll tell you one thing, he knows his way to the ropes. Referee Wada stepping in, brings him back into the center. We're seeing a whole bunch of world champions. We've seen Gary Albright, we've seen Dan Severin, the world heavyweight amateur wrestling champion and Sambo champion. Now we're seeing Dennis Kozlowski, the silver medalist in the last Barcelona Olympics. And he takes him over again with a belly to belly, but Takata looks very calm. Trying to apply a hammer lock, now a double wrist lock on Dennis Kozlowski, and Kozlowski's in trouble. But yet again, finds his way to the ropes. And yeah. Takata really has a hard task tonight because after this fight, he's going up against Naoki Sano, another visiting wrestler. So, they're piling up and queuing up for Takata. But for the moment, Kozlowski looking for his opportunity. Ooh. Ooh. Kozlowski in trouble now. Yeah, I think Takada's actually said, hey, I've got another, another appointment. And he takes him down with the kicks. One, Clinical. Two, An interesting fact, four, Dennis's brother, Dwayne five. Kozlowski, is another world-class wrestler, and Takada's actually taken him on, and he's beaten him with a cross-arm lock. Go, go, Five minutes, five minutes pass. Oh, no, Takada's... Takata's only going to get one more on shot, but ooh, Kozlowski's showing he's not finished yet. Takes him down, and he has an Achilles tendon hold on Takata, but Takata doesn't look alarmed at this point. Neither should he be. He's putting together yet again another impressive performance. Going for the face lock now.
Now he's trying to set up for that cross line. He manages to get it. Pretty good position, too. I don't know if that's it yet. Cross lock. Cross lock on the arm. And that's how quick it is. His last day was looking for the ref. He had to tuck the shin of the winner. And now we're going to see him in a few minutes go up against Naoki Sano. Great test and sign of endurance, stamina, and durability. It's Takada's ability to do a double bank, as we're seeing here tonight. disappears for a quick breather. His next opponent is leaving the dressing room fresh as a daisy. Bushido history, Nobuhiko Takada against Naoki Sano, his second opponent in succession. Naoki Sano from Hokkaido comes from the shoot style wrestling school. He had to literally fight his way to get into the UWFI. A tough opponent. We don't know too much about him. Nobuhiko Takada, a man who makes history almost every time he fights. Tonight it's one down, one to go. And now we have independent professional wrestler Naoki Sano and Nobuhiko Takada accepting his challenge. This is his second fight tonight. He just fought Denis Koslowski, the silver medalist from the Barcelona Olympics. It should be interesting to see how Takada squares up. Good test of his endurance and durability. <laughs> As we see there. Nice low kick. Swept him right off his feet. And Sano quickly back on his feet. Sano um, is an independent wrestler. He, he doesn't have a contract with any of the companies. And he proposed a challenge to Takata, and Takata accepted. And we'll see his first fight in the UWF International, how he does. But how good is he? I mean, is he, is he up to taking on Takata and giving him a, 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 a good match, or is this just a, a card filler? I, I really haven't I haven't seen him. He hasn't fought this style. I haven't seen him fight this style yet, so it's going to be hard to tell. But he looks in very good condition. He looks light on his feet. But he has some good kicks. Right, 
And he looks like he has a pretty good knowledge of the wrestling, too. Yeah, he knows his way around this ring. So he, he certainly looks so far that he, he's capable of fighting the style. Well, as I said earlier, a good test of Takada's overall durability and just showing the type of endurance that this man possesses. Well, I give a lot of credit to Naoki Sano for stepping up in a UWFI ring. He's a free wrestler and he goes all around. But to step up in this kind of ring and to do the real deal, he, uh, he has some courage. Cross lock by Takata, but you see he quickly reversed it. And now he's holding on to Takata's Achilles tendon trying to apply pressure. He seems to know what he's doing at this point. You say maybe independent, but there's a hell of a lot of similarity in the abilities at the moment. A lot of instructions being offered by him, but he knows where the palm strike is. And he knows how to apply the leverage on the leg, and he actually has Takata escaping to the ropes. Look what we see here. We have some kind of challenge for her here, and He's proving to be more of a threat than Dennis Kozlowski. Yes, and he must be a threat because Takata now going to work with his devastating kicking arsenal now. But look at Naoki Sano block those kicks with his... He's lifting his leg and blocking him, and he comes with his own leg kick and takes him down. Amazing. Seems to have done his homework. In no way intimidated by Takata. <laughs> nice, nice backdrop, and Takata's on top now. Sano holding his head, but seems to be okay, shaking his head. Takata going for the face lock. And Sano looks like he might be in trouble. Be interesting to see just how long he lasts. Because up to now he's put in a very good opening account of himself. Well, it's pretty hard. He's, he's done very well. I'm very surprised at his performance. He really shows that he can fight in this kind of ring and he can participate in the real deal. This crowd, ever appreciative, ever knowledgeable. But he's, he's in trouble now. Takata has him in the middle of the ring and he's applying a devastating face lock. I don't know how long he's going to be able to take, but he's out of it. I'm not sure if that was a reprieve from Takata or not, but Sano seems okay. Going for the single leg Boston Crab, but Takata sees that and he grabs him in an ankle lock and takes him down. And yet again, I think we have a regular voice in the crowd there who also manages to entertain. It looks like Takata's trying to conserve energy at this point. He's not trying to exert himself. He's really watching his stamina because he realized he had two fights tonight. And right now he's taking it easy and he's not wasting any kind of energy at this point. He's only exerting himself when really necessary. And he found it necessary to try to find that arm lock right there and he manages to make Sano escape to the rope. And he's back up on his feet. I'd have to say that Takata definitely has the advantage here. Although Sano has showed his kicking ability and his kicks cer certainly aren't shabby. Now Takata sweating quite a bit now, showing a little bit of the fatigue of taking on a double challenge. Ooh. Side of the fatigue. So Takata goes to work against try and finish this. Oh. He's caught by Sano. He caught Takata's kick, gives him a kick in the stomach, and he looked like he was going for the reverse Achilles tendon hold, but takes him over with a belly to back German suplex. But Takata's right on top of him and goes for a cross lock on the leg. Amazing. And now Sano reverses it. What a brilliant showing of skill and technique on Sano's part. Yes, he's shown his durability, sure enough. That left leg 
roundhouse kick, which is becoming a trademark of Takada's already formidable arsenal. Not quite having enough power to finish off Sano. I'm sure Takada is saving himself just for the right moment. As soon as he finds the opening, he's going to really explode with those punches and kicks. He's going to take him down and try to finish him off with a submission. Well, we have to wait and see. But up to now, Sano giving an excellent account of himself. But he's in danger of submitting to the cross lock if Takata can just manage to break that grip. What he has to do is hit his hands apart, pull up, use leverage to break that grip, and extend the arm. Well, that's exactly what he's trying to do, and he's got it. Yep, he's done it. The only trouble is they're too close to the ropes, and Sano manages to escape. Well, as we see here, Sano showing almost an eight cents in fighting that rope. He's still on his feet. But that has taken a lot out of Sano, and Sano looks tired. But he's fighting back. He doesn't look tired to me. This looks like a great toe to toe trade. Good heel of the hand strikes by Takata. And he has, it looks like he has Sano stunned. But both are still on their feet. This is becoming quite an exciting bout. We just wonder how much more endurance Takata's got in the tank. I don't know. I see Takata there telling Sano, come on, come on, come after it. Headlock by Sano. He's going for this face lock. But Takata reversing that on him. Referee Wada pulling them back from the ropes. They do say, I mean, obviously Takata now feeling invincible, that he can take anybody and any number of people on. Spinning back kick to the head, but Sano catches it. He actually catches it, trips him, takes him down. He's going for a modified single leg Boston crab right now. But Takata knows that, and he's, he's preventing Sano from putting his weight on it. If Sano can't sit back on it and put his weight into it, he can't apply the proper leverage. Takata knows that, and he's not going to let him do it. And Sano gives up, and once again, he's going for a sleeper hold with a body scissor. Well, as we see there, Takata opening up another kick in his uh, impressive array. A spinning reverse roundhouse kick. Takata escapes to the ropes. These are special matches, and you might have noticed there's no points taken off for the rope escapes. This is a test of endurance and stamina, as well as durability on Takata's part. But Sano's really shown a well account, a good account of himself as he's going after Takata with strikes and hits, but I think Takata's kicking ability is much superior to Sano's, and he definitely has the advantage in the standing position. Yes, I'd go along with that, but considering Sano hasn't had this opportunity of running this type of system before, not only did he take him over with that fireman's carry, he slammed him down with it. Now he's trying to set up that face lock again. But Takata's really quick to reacting, and he's not letting him apply that leverage. He's really, he, you notice, he's holding on his wrist. Shoot time. The submission there being afforded to Takata. He's not even acknowledged it yet from everyone. There's a difference starting to come out as Takata throws that backdrop on Sano. Takata is starting to show a little bit more superiority over Sano in the ground wrestling now at this point. Yes, I'd have to agree. The one advantage Sano has is he's an unknown entity. But right now, I guess Takata has decided he wants to put an end to this thing. We saw him kind of saving energy. He was saving himself and trying to relax during the whole bout until Sano was tired out. Sano's been knocked down. And he looks a little bit tired out, and it looks like Takata feels that this is the right time. He's softened him up enough. He should go for the submission. And he's going for the arm lock right now, like we see. And now for the side arm bar. But Sano showing great wrestling ability. Oh. Cross lock. Almost had him. That was very, very close. And I feel it. Takata doesn't put Sano away quickly. We could have a major upset here tonight. Reversal with the cross lock on the arm. He pulled the grab. Can he escape the ropes? I don't think so. That's it. 
Well, I did say it's a kind of in finishing soon. He was in trouble. Look at that expression. He really waited for that mo moment. He didn't want to dive in too quickly. He wanted to soften Sano up first. He wanted to tire him out, take his stamina away, and look for that right opportunity. And he managed to do it. He put away two men today, two top class caliber wrestlers today with that same cross lock on the arm. Amazing. Your winner, Nobuhiko Takata, the pro wrestling heavyweight champion of the world. Well, I was just interested in winning tonight. Well, it was kind of tough because I had two matches tonight, but I managed to beat both of them. So I'm happy about that. What do you plan for? Well, from now on, for the world of pro wrestling and for the world of UWF International, I'm willing to take on anybody's challenge from anybody who's qualified. A great athlete, a great sportsman, a great competitor. That's Nobuhiko Takada. Thank you very much. Takada Nobuhiko, please give me a round of applause.